Hi, welcome to part three of our series of screencasts explaining OAuth 2.0. Uh, in the previous segment, part two, we took a look at how an OAuth client service and an OAuth provider service establish a shared secret. The next piece for us to take a look at is how a user grants an OAuth access token to that client service, allowing it to access her data on the provider service. Uh, before we take a deep dive and look at each individual step of that granting process, let's take a quick look at a little demo. We'll go back to Parsley.com and Acme Bank. And here we have a user named Mary, who is, uh, she's logged on to her Acme Bank account here. You can see that she has three accounts. Savings account, just shy of $13,000. And uh, but she also has some credit accounts elsewhere and a car loan and she's having a hard time staying on top of all this so she signed up over at parsley.com uh, to get a single dashboard a single view of all of this stuff um, so she's going to start by adding her Acme bank accounts so she picks her bank puts in her number expects to see a, a, a little gadget showing her Acme information um, but because this is her first time using Parsley, uh, Parsley doesn't have an access token for her data over at Acme. So they challenge her uh, with a, uh, a message that she needs to authorize that access. Obviously, uh, in a real world uh, situation, this would be a much friendlier message, such as uh, Parsley has never accessed Acme Bank on your behalf before. Please click here to authorize. Uh, so when she does that, um, she is uh, shown a pop-up that's actually the Acme Bank login. Um, so that should make her feel fairly comfortable that uh, it's actually Acme, Acme Bank um, and not Parsley asking her for her Acme Bank credentials. So we'll log in. Uh, and Acme is asking her, do you wish to allow the service name Parsley.com to access Acme Bank on your behalf? Well, yes, I do. Uh, and now uh, her data is there and she can feel free to go and add another one and that token will uh, outlast the browser session so the next time she logs into parsley.com no problem whatsoever to see that Acme Bank data again uh, the token will expire according to whatever policy Acme Bank has set up if it expires she simply just goes through that authorization process again uh, something we won't dig into in this series is that there's also a, a refresh protocol um, built in that could make that even a little bit less painless uh, for Mary. 